very last look north after 32 years with the BBC. And during this week, inevitably, I suppose, my colleagues have been springing a few, uh, I must say, very pleasant surprises. I feel one coming on now. Yes, Mike. Well, as you can see, we've chosen suitably baronial surroundings for a little get-together later on. And we couldn't, of course, let this occasion pass without hearing from a few of your friends. Here's what they had to say. People used to love it whenever Sue Lawley or Mike Barrett or Frank Boss said, now we're going to Newcastle to join Mike Neville. They loved it because they knew that they could expect something really unusual out of Mike. I mean, it might be a witticism, it might be a joke, it might be a crack of some kind, it might be an anecdote, but whatever he did, he did with great humanity and great good humour, and uh, basically, he made us all laugh. I think the most important thing I remember is that he taught me more or less everything I know, and I hope that's a fair amount by now, about working in a TV studio. He was simply the best professional broadcaster I'd certainly come across at that time, and in the years since, I haven't met anybody to beat him, frankly. Speaking personally, what I shall always think of when I think of Mike Neville is whenever I've seen him, which has been quite often over the years, whenever I've met him and talked to him, or whenever I've seen him on the television screen, he's always made me feel better. There's something about that delightful personality that gives one a, a bit of a lift. He is that fairly rare commodity in our business, a star. Uh, an awful lot of people try to become stars, uh, even more think they are stars. And Mike doesn't realise it, but he is a star. I think he's just a nice guy, and people like nice guys. He, he's got no edge on him, and uh, people up north uh, like that, don't they? And uh, therefore, whatever he's going to do in the future, I just wish him well. All the best, Mike. Mike has that absolute professionalism that can handle any situation and you just know a pro is there it's a pleasure to watch him say good night jeffrey good night jeffrey good night thank you <laughs> Well, it's not quite good night yet, of course, because we're now able to link up with Pebble Mill Studios in Birmingham and Frank Boff, who, of course, Mike, you took over from all those 32 years ago. Frank, you must be very sorry not to be with us tonight. Tony, I am. I, I just a uh, terrible clash of dates and uh, work to be done here in Pebble Mill today, and I am missing a very good party. I have absolutely no doubt about that. I am sorry not to be there. What do you remember of your days at uh, Newcastle? Well, of course, they were very exciting days because the, uh, the North East region had its own program for the first time in a news and current affair sense, and uh, Look North was born. So it was an exciting time. And uh, Mike followed me. I can't believe it was 32 years ago since he put his bum on my seat. But, of course, by all accounts, he's graced it admirably throughout all those years since I've gone. And uh, I thought he did a very clever thing, actually. The, the, the day he arrived, he started on the Monday after I'd left, and I gather that in the, in the Tiny's Television Listings magazine, which was called The Viewer in those days, I don't, know, I don't know what it's called now. Uh, he actually contrived to have his, his, his face on the front cover as Tiny's Television's Personality of the Year. I remember the BBC really loved that. It was a great touch of irony. Have you any, any thoughts for Mike uh, as he leaves us? Uh, I, I just to wish him well. Um, I, I don't know uh, uh, what he's going to do there, but uh, nevertheless, I'm sure he feels that the change is necessary. And uh, I just wish him well. And uh, look after yourself and come and see us sometime and have a really good time, Mike. And, Enjoy the party. Well, great. Thanks very much, uh, Frank. And as you can see, a great many more of your chums here oh, uh, get together tonight. Uh, we're going to be having a little presentation when you come down and uh, join us. Tom, you remember Mike from a few years ago. Very, very kind person to me. Thank you, Mike, for all the things you've done for me, including when I brought the road show here, a lunchtime live program it was, Tony, and uh, Mike was ever so kind because I said, what can I do with Geordies who are live? And he said, oh, it'll be fine. And we, we had a guest artist who was a magician, and he, he, he grabbed a Geordie from the audience and he said, uh, if I put my hand in your inside pocket and pull out a rabbit, will you be surprised? And the fellow said, I'd be amazed, I've got a ferret in there. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, you saw me through. <laughs> OK, well, uh, Paul, uh, you've also worked uh, with uh, Mike on a couple of occasions. Yes, I have. I've always been a fan of Mike's, by the way, especially his writing, because I think he's a prolific author, is Mike. He's written two books. The first one was called How to Beat the Breathalyzer, 
And the second one was nice walks in the Northumbrian countryside. So I've always, I've always been full of admiration. Nice one, Michael. We'll see you in a few uh, minutes, sir, Mike, but uh, I know you've got uh, important things to do uh, for the weather forecast and to say uh, cheerio to the viewers. Uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks a lot, Tony. Thank you, Paul. Love you. Wait till I get down there. Nice to see Tom again. And Jake Kelly in the background. See you very shortly, I hope. Uh, we've come to the weather forecast now, as Tony uh, said, and uh, John Clapham, poor chap, has been so overcome by emotion that he's had to sit down tonight. It might happen again, but I don't. <laughs> well, you're right. It's a bit of a drastic way of getting a chair, I must say. Listen, I'll tell you what, they've painted the arms for you. <laughs> That's still wet. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably expecting really nice weather. It seems it's your last forecast. Really good weekend. Yes. Well, some of it will be okay. Uh, All of it. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll try. It's, uh, it's not going to be too bad tonight anyway, just one or two showers coming over the Pennines from time to time. But uh, with quite a strong wind still blowing, it does at least mean that the temperatures will be nothing lower than about 9 degrees through the night. Uh, still quite a strong wind though, still very gusty as well. And on to tomorrow, I think we'll have a very similar sequence of weather to what we saw today to be honest, with uh, one or two showers starting perhaps from the word go in Cumbria. But uh, the best of the dry weather, I think in the morning in the northeast of England, as the day progresses, we should find one or two showers start to break out east of the Pennines, and there will still, of course, be showers in Cumbria. Possibly one or two more than we saw today. Temperatures similar to what we had today, 16, maybe 17 degrees, and the wind's still quite fresh from the southwest, but not quite as strong as it was today. On to Sunday, and a rather cloudy start to the day, but as the day progresses, it should brighten up a little, a bit, a bit of sunshine getting out, one or two showers developing, and temperatures at 16, pretty much the average for the time of year. The winds, though, very light on Sunday. I think because of that, it will probably feel the best day of the two. Thanks very much, John. Uh, well, that's about it. Uh, I would say it's been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure, of course. 32 years, a lot of fun, a lot of friends, uh, a lot of good and bad news, which has affected millions of people in this great area of ours. I'd like to thank all the many colleagues I've worked with over the years, and uh, naturally, all of you, for your support, your warmth, and your friendship. I'm off now to join Tony and whoever those other people were, so it just leaves me uh, to say good luck to look north in the future, and don't forget, I'll be back. Good night.